Hello everyone, this is Jose Argumento. Uh, this isn't really a tutorial, this is just some video tools that I really like to use and I don't see talked about on YouTube enough, so I thought I'd just go ahead and talk about them really quickly. I use them pretty constantly and they are wonderful. So a lot of you probably know about FFmpeg. Um, FFmpeg is a command line based encoder and it's really really powerful really really just um you know just powerful like it's it's incredibly flexible in what it can do but i am personally am not a fan of command line i've never been really a fan anytime i have to open up a terminal i'm just i i, I feel like it's a little too overwhelming sometimes but luckily there are some ui front ends for ffmpeg and in particular, the one we're going to be talking about is FFWorks. This uh, is incredibly simple to use, and I use this tool very, very much. Uh, I use this tool constantly. It's just so much. It's so cool what you can do with it. Um, of course, one of the big things, uh, the big example I'm going to be using it for. This is a 4K Blu-ray rip. Uh, that's an MKV. I, I did this in Make, Make MKV. And it, uh, it doesn't pass through its HDR metadata very well to like VLC or INNA on the Mac. The, the players just don't really know what to do with that HDR metadata quite yet. So the tone mapping they do is very wrong. But QuickTime, QuickTime on the Mac actually fully supports HDR. In fact, all of Apple's like professional products basically support HDR now as of Catalina. So like... Um, it, so like you can edit HDR really well in Final Cut Pro. You can edit, you can of course make a uh, professional video in Compressor and make sure that that metadata stays intact. But the problem is none of Apple's products support MKVs. So one of the big reasons I use this is to, because uh, 4K Blu-rays are just HEVC files. So, you know, we have the file right here. Um, it's an MKV. But I can just take it into, I'm going to go ahead and take it into here, and we can just pass through the video. Just pass it through, and it'll, uh, in fact, I'm gonna take the audio off. We can just pass it through, and it'll just make an MOV file. Uh, I did that a little earlier, so we won't have to do it again. All you have to do is hit, you know, all you have to do is um, hit uh, play here, or start, and it'll go start right here and it will go ahead and do that for you and then you look at the video and it's fully compatible with Apple's finder and it's correctly tone mapped uh, it just makes it so so easy to use and you can take this video into compressor or Final Cut and it will absolutely work um, just fine it's great I love FF works just for that reason alone it's also just a really powerful encoder in general so you can take all kinds of footage and encode it into what you need you can take this and turn it into ProRes if you needed it if you didn't want to edit HEVC video in uh, in fine in whatever you can take it and turn it into ProRes or turn it into huffy YUV huffy YUV um, because you know you just need a lossless video for whatever reason it, it's just incredibly flexible. And of course, on the audio side, you can do uh, Dolby Digital, you can do DTS, you can of course do uncompressed PCM, which is probably the one you want. Uh, and it's the easiest to work with. All this stuff is just really great. It's very simple. All the filters that you're uh, probably aware of. So like, it's called Netty 3 in, um, in the FFmpeg. It's just under a different name here. It's called Deinterlace Neural Network. Um, there's the motion compensating deinterlacing. There's Yadif here at the bottom. There's Smart Blur. There's like all this types of stuff. Edge Detect, Detelicene, like all types of filters that you can use. Um, but as some of you might know, excuse the email, I'm sorry about that. As some of you might know, there is no, um, some of the filters that you might need are actually an AVI synth or vapor synth and once again those are both kind of command line based and I'm not a fan of either one so I have another front end for you it's called hybrid um, and I absolutely adore this program it's not as polished as FF works 
but basically it runs as a front end to AviSynth or what I use since I'm on a Mac, VaporSynth. And it just is pretty easy to like follow and get right and just like go through the filters. So like, let's say I need to deinterlace something. I have this interlaced footage. Let me mute that. Oops, sorry. I have this interlaced footage, you know, with all these artifacts and I just, I need to get rid of those. And I want to use the best filter possible. Well, that filter for me would be QTGMC. I think it does amazing work. In fact, I already prepared and did it for you. Um, looking at that work, it's just very, none of those interlacing artifacts show up. I think it does a great job. And you can set it to certain presets. You can do custom. And of course, you can go over to the Vapor Synth tab. And, you know, all the settings for it are basically right there laid out extremely simply, extremely well. So if you need to resize it, you can use Netty. Um, you can also use Waifu 2X, though I do not recommend that. Uh, I would stick to Netty if you're going to use uh, VaporSynth. If you do need to use Waifu 2X for whatever reason, I have another tutorial on that. Uh, the other thing that's really cool about it is that you can do all the settings that you need to and also take a look at the script. So if you do need to do any kind of scripting, you can just go ahead and do it. Um, and look at what your script is. And uh, even if you don't want to like actually type out the script, you can just come in here and type out whatever you might need to add to this that hybrid doesn't provide. And it is just really, really powerful. Uh, you can use all the custom code that you want and put it wherever you need and double check where it might need to be here. It's a super powerful tool. I love it. Um, it is, uh, not exactly the most user friendly for someone who's just starting out. Uh, it, it on the web page for it, it does say it's meant for advanced users. But honestly, like within a, probably an hour, if you are familiar with how VaporSynth works, or if you're familiar with video in general, you can probably figure this thing out within an hour max. It's really, really powerful. I can't recommend this tool enough. Another one, of course, is Final Cut. Um, I would really recommend Final Cut over uh, Premiere when it comes to HDR. I know, and probably DaVinci above both because DaVinci is what a lot of uh, uh, professional color graders use like as their um, tool, but I don't uh, have DaVinci Resolve and I've never used it in my life. But HDR color grading in um, in in Final Cut is incredibly well just laid out and it's very easy to use. You have your scopes here, of course. You can determine the net level of something and like really play around with it. Obviously, you know, you can, all your color commands are right here. Of course you have color wheels and it's all HDR compatible. It totally recognizes HDR metadata and will export that HDR metadata for you. Uh, it's just incredibly, Incredibly simple. If you want to convert that video into ProRes first, um, or if you want to take screenshots, I use Compressor. Compressor is a very, again, because it's part of Apple's uh, suite of professional video programs, it does an excellent job of just, I don't know why it's frozen on the side, but it just does an excellent job of, um, of transferring over that HDR metadata. It's the tool I usually rely on the most. And it's also the tool I tend to use to use, uh, it's the tool I use to do HDR screenshots and make sure that they are properly encoded for Twitter. Um, so you can make a, P so let's say I want to take a screenshot of this. I don't want to do the entire image sequence. I can just do in out and just do that one frame and I'll have my PNG in you know the proper sequence. It's just, uh, another very incredibly powerful tool. I highly recommend it, especially if you're doing HDR stuff. Uh, FFWorks plus compressor will make your life so much easier. Um, now, I know that Final Cut Pro and compressor and even Apple Motion are not exactly unknown apps, but um, I still wanted to talk about them because uh, we're moving into this HDR world, and I think it's really important to have tools that know what HDR metadata is supposed to look like and what it, what it's supposed to do with it. Um, 
because I have been Adobe Premiere user for many, many, many years now. And I've gone through many, many, many iterations of Adobe Premiere. Um, and they have not fixed all their HDR issues. It's still broken, basically. It really doesn't work. So, um, yeah, I would totally recommend this over Adobe if you're doing anything in HDR. Of course, if you're really serious about HDR, you're probably doing DaVinci Resolve, but again, I've never used it before. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I just wanted to highlight mostly hybrid here and FF works. Both of these hybrid is 100% free. FF works is, um, 20 euros. So I think it's about 30 bucks, 40 bucks maybe. Uh, but so worth it. It's not subscription based. So you can just keep it. And there's a free trial if you want to try it out and play with it yourself. Hybrid, once again, is 100% free. And I'll even leave a link below to um, where you can download it with all the extra packages like VaporSynth that you're going to need to make sure that it works. Um, and yeah, it's just, I love these two tools. I wish more people knew about them or talked about them a little more often because it's they're really, really powerful tools and they just save you from using command line. Um, so yeah, that's it. I just wanted to talk about these programs that I really, really love. Um, go out and check them out. I hope more people start using them because they're really outstanding tools. Um, all right, that's it. Thanks. Bye.